Hello and welcome. Today we're working on inventory and cost of goods sold. We're going to do a LIFO, FIFO, and weighted average problem. Now this is our second example. I'll link to that first video before, but if you haven't seen that first one, that's fine. This is just a, another problem that illustrates LIFO and FIFO. Now let's talk about inventory methods real quickly. The FIFO method is the first in, first out method. That means we have to make an assumption that our very first items we purchase are the first ones we sell. So that's an assumption. The LIFO assumption, or the last in, first out, means the very latest items that we purchase is the first ones that we sell. And then we do weighted average, which is a combination of those two. So let's do, this is our second problem, but if you haven't seen the first video, that's fine. This is a, a brand new problem. So let's assume that we purchased 35 at $5 each, 55 at $10 each, 75 at $12 each, and 35 at 15. And then we have two sales. We sold 70 and 60 in the month of October. So the first thing we want to do is let's calculate the total inventory that we had available, 200. And let's calculate the 35 times the five, so that means we spent $175 on all of those. And we're gonna calculate that for each level. So what we have is our total inventory cost, 2150, 2150. And we sold 130 of the 200 available. So I'm gonna put here on the little helper column here, I'll have 130 that we sold and since we had 200 available, I'm gonna put 200 minus the 130 that we sold. We can do this one right there. And our ending inventory is made up of 70. Now, what is the cost of goods sold for the 130 using the FIFO or LIFO or weighted average assumption? And what is the cost of the ending inventory under those assumptions? So let's get started. So, the FIFO assumption says we sell the first, and so we'll start at the top here, and we're gonna count all the way down till we get to 130. So here's what it would work. We have 35 plus 55, that'll be 90. So we need 40 more at that next level, uh, the October 20th purchase. So let's figure out cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold would be all the 35 at that level, plus all the 55, and that's gonna be 90 units plus we need, we need a total of 130, so we need 40 more times the $12. So we sold all the first level, all the second level, and part of the third level of purchases. So our cost of goods sold looks like it's 1,205, and our ending inventory then is gonna be the 2150, minus the 12.05, because those two numbers have to equal the goods available. Now, is there a way we can do that directly? Well, we know that if we sold 130, we had 70 we did not sell, so it's gonna be 35 here and 35 there. So let's, let's calculate it directly. We won't do this every time, but it's the 525, plus we had 35 units times the $12, and that would be 945. These two numbers, right here, these two numbers, must equal 2,150. Now, if we switch assumptions and we assume LIFO, we assume the last in is the first out, we start from the bottom. We sold the 35 plus 75. We count from the bottom up to 130. So, let's see what we can do. We're, we're gonna do all the 35 plus all the 75. Now 35 plus 75 would be 110 and we need 20 more. So we're gonna add 20 items that cost us $10 each. So that's 1625. And so what we have is we sold 35 and 75 and then 25 more, uh, or rather 20 more and we're left with 35 here and 35 here to equal the 70. Now we can run the math or we can say 2150 minus the 1625 is 525. Let's check our work. 
we know it's going to be the 175 at the very top plus we have 35 times the ten dollars and so what we have is 525 so that looks like that works now for weighted average what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the 2150 divided by the total cost divided by the units which is 200 and we're going to get something like 1075 $10.75 and so when we have 130 that we sold 130 times 1075 the cost of goods sold is 1398 and we have 70 items that we sold or that we did not sell times the 1075 so our ending inventory is going to be 753 under the weighted average assumption so you'll see the weighted average is in between the two extremes of LIFO and FIFO in both cases now let's do perpetual FIFO perpetual the dates matter. We, we didn't really worry about the dates in terms of when we had things available to sell and things like that. In other words, we used the 130. Having these dates here on periodic are not really important. On perpetual, we'll use those. So let's, let's build a little chart at the bottom and we'll see how this works. So the dates are important. The 1st, the 11th, the 13th, the 20th, the 23rd, and the 31st. All those dates matter, okay? So on perpetual FIFO, the first thing we did, now follow along at the table up above, the first thing we did, we, we purchased 35, each one cost $5. Now I've already built the math, so I'm taking 35 times five equals 175. Now the next thing that happens is, with another purchase, we purchased 55, each one of these cost $10. So now on the, the 11th of October, we have 90 units that cost us a total of 725. But we're going to sell 70. Which 70 do we sell? Well, when we're on FIFO, we sell the first 70. So what I'm going to do is take 35 minus 35, right? We're going to be left with zero. We're going to sell all those 35. And I now I need 35 more to get to my 70. So I'm going to take 55 minus 35. I'm left with 20 after that October 13th purchase, or sale rather. And so we sold the first 70. The next thing that happens on the 20th is we purchase 75. We purchase 75, that cost us $12 each, so that is $900. And then the next date, we, the, from the 20th to the 23rd, we sold 60. Which 60 do we sell? Well, we sold the first 60. We sold here 20, okay, so we're left with zero, and we need 40 more. So 75 minus the 40, we're left with 35 items in our inventory. All right, the only last thing we have in this problem is we have 35 purchased, and each one of those costs $15. So our total ending inventory is 945. So I'm going to put 945 here as our ending inventory under perpetual FIFO. <clears throat> now our cost of goods sold is going to be the $21.50 minus the $9.45 and what we have is $9.45 is our ending inventory and cost of goods sold is $1,205. Now one thing you need to pay attention to is this is the same for periodic FIFO and perpetual FIFO. So what happens on this um, FIFO, it's going to be the same whether it's periodic or perpetual. So you can always do the problem using periodic FIFO and you'll get the same answer for perpetual FIFO. Now that's not true for LIFO. LIFO is going to be a little different so let's calculate that separately and we'll be finished with this example of this problem. Alright, so the same kind of um, idea here we're going to start with the dates the first date is 35 that we spent five dollars on the very next date is the 11th and we purchased 55 at ten dollars each and then we had a sale this sale on october 13th we sold 70 well which 70 did we sell we sold the last 70 okay so we sold all of the 55 and we needed 70 
So minus 55, we need 15 more. So now 30, let me do the math, 35 minus 15, we're left with 20. So after the first two purchases and the first sale, we're left with 20 items that are from the very first uh, level of inventory. The next thing that happens is we have a October 20th purchase. We have 75 at $12 each. Then we have a sale of 60. Well, which 60 did we sell? We sold the last 60. So we go here, 75 minus 60, we'll be left with 15. And then the very last thing that happens is October 31st, we have 35 at $15. And so we have 525 there for that level. So our ending inventory is 805. I'm gonna to point to that, 805. And therefore, we can figure out our cost of goods sold is $21.50 minus $8.05. Now, if you want some extra help, I've got the previous video. I'll link to it below. But this is how you solve periodic FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average and perpetual FIFO and LIFO. Hey, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.